So this video, I'm going to be verifying these two identities here. Um, on this first one here, I noticed that you canceled a one here and a one here. Let me just kind of uh, show it again here. That is not allowed. Okay, a uh, couple different reasons. You can only do things when everything on top is multiplying together and everything on bottom is multiplying together. There, you've got a minus in between those. So those are not allowed to have any part of them canceled out except for the whole one minus sine x. And here also, this is not multiplying with the top. It is minusing. That is not allowed. Okay, that is not allowed. Um, so let me rewrite this problem. So we can see it, um, cosine x, cotangent x, um, 1 minus sine x minus 1 is equal to cosecant x. Now, I'm going to write this cosecant x in a different color um, because we're going to be constantly keeping that cosecant x. So I'm just going to make a couple of copies of these. Okay, I'm just going to put them over here on the side. So I just got a bunch of these. Okay. Now, when we are doing that, again, that, that side is going to stay cosecant x. I'm only going to be dealing with the left side. Now, first thing I notice here, a couple things we can do, but first thing I'm noticing is this cotangent x. I'm going to rewrite that. A cotangent x, okay, a cotangent x, if I just jot that over here, a cotangent x is equal to a cosine x over sine x. So I'm going to rewrite this as cosine x times um, cosine x over sine x. And then that's all over 1 minus sine x. I'm going to clean that up here in a second. Is equal to... And then we're going to have one of our cosecant x's over here. Now, um, this 1 minus sine x is a whole thing that's together. When I am, and, and I can kind of clean up this top part. Let me kind of clean up this top part here. So that's going to be a cosine, a cosine squared x over sine x. Okay, now it's timesing by... The reciprocal, because this is dividing, so really it's going to be 1 minus sine x. That's multiplying with that. I'm just cleaning up this fraction here. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Um, and then let me take one of these um, over here. Okay. Okay. So... Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to rewrite this as a cosine squared x over sine x times 1 minus sine x minus 1. Okay. Now, when I have my minus 1, I do want to get a common denominator. So I am going to be timesing top and bottom of this one by, and, and let me here put this over 1. I'm going to be timesing top and bottom by a sine x. Let me move all this over. Okay, um, get this over here. I'm going to be timesing top and bottom by a um, sine x. I get my over one, sorry. I'm going to be multiplying by a sine x, one minus sine x on top, and sine x. Um, 1 minus sine x on bottom. And again, that's going to equal, sorry, equal my um, cosecant x. Now, I was trying to get common denominators, okay? And so my common denominators, let me just move that back. Um, I do have both of these denominators are going to be sine x x times 1 minus sine x. Um, the first fraction, I have on top a cosine squared x. The second fraction, I'm basically going to have a negative 1, or basically a negative sine x here. Let me just kind of show that this here is going to become a negative sine x, and that's going to distribute here and here.
So my negative one times my sine x here, okay? Let me just kind of rewrite this for a second. That's gonna be a negative sine x, okay? But let me put back, it was a one, and I had times by a sine x, one minus sine x. So I'm gonna distribute that. I'm gonna get a minus sine x. Um, a negative times a negative is a positive. I'm gonna get a positive sine squared x is equal to a cosecant x again. Now, I notice that I have a cosine squared x and a plus sine squared x. That makes a one, okay? So let me just jot over here. Um, cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to one. That's the Pythagorean identity. So in place of the cosine squared x plus sine squared x, I'm going to write a one. I'm just gonna move this up a little. So that's gonna become a one minus sine x over sine x times one minus sine x equals, again, a cosecant x. Now this one minus sine x, I'm gonna put a grouping around it. I have a whole one minus sine x on top. I have a whole one minus sine x on bottom. I'm just gonna kind of highlight it. I'm gonna be canceling, making them a one, but let me just, Sorry, um, let's say, okay, um, this whole one minus sine x and this whole one minus sine x together are going to cancel out. And I am going to get a one over sine x equals, again, my cosecant x, but a one over sine x is a cosecant x. So I'm going to get a cosecant x is equal to the other side, which is a cosecant x. And there, we verified it. Now, the next one, okay, I'm going to get common denominators. So I am going to be taking my first fraction, which is, I'm going to write it all together, cosine x minus cosine y, that's my numerator. My denominator is sine x plus sine y, okay? So I'm just kind of thinking of these being grouped together because they cannot be separated, okay? Um, and so I am going to be multiplying top and bottom of this one by this denominator. So I'm going to be multiplying by cosine x plus cosine y cosine x plus cosine y. Then for my other fraction, I have a sine x minus sine y over a cosine x plus cosine y. And I am going to be timesing by that di di um, dynam uh, sorry, denominator. So I'm going to be multiplying by sine x plus sine y, top and bottom. And again, our goal at the end of this is to get it to equal zero. That's our goal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this math. Okay, now you'll notice that my denominators are both going to be cosine x plus cosine y times sine x plus sine y. Okay, and again, we want it to equal zero. Now, what I'm going to do first is I am going to do this math. I'm going to multiply those together. Okay, and those really are a difference of two squares if you're looking at it. So that is going to be a cosine squared x minus a cosine squared y plus, and then I'm going to do the similar over here, okay? So I'm going to multiply those together. And when I multiply those together, again, that's also a difference of two squares. So that's going to be a sine squared x minus sine squared y. Now, what's going to happen here is this, let me match these up. Um, this and this is going to make a one, okay? Those are gonna make a one because 
a cosine squared x plus a sine squared x equals 1. Okay, that's a Pythagorean identity, trig identity. So this here plus that there is going to be a 1. So that's going to be 1. Now, for the other part of it, um, I have a, I'll use this color, I have this minus cosine squared y and this minus sine squared y. Well, first off, I can think of that as a minus, let me just kind of think about it this way, as a minus parenthesis cosine squared y plus sine squared y. I can think about it like that. And so what I'm going to be using is, again, the same formula, but this time instead of sine squared uh, and cosine squared x, it's going to be y's. Okay. Um, let me just rewrite the bottom of this. Cosine x plus cosine y times sine x plus sine y equals zero. So again, this right here is going to be a one. So I am going to have my one minus another one over cosine x plus cosine y um, sine x plus sine y equals zero. Now one minus one is going to be a zero. So I am going to get zero over cosine x plus cosine y and sine x plus sine y. And when I have a zero on top, that means this whole left side is going to be zero. So I get zero is equal to zero done. Hopefully that helps you out.